Welcome back to another BGS video. My name is Justin, and in this video, I'll be giving you a brief overview of CFIT, Controlled Flight into Terrain. Your company will have their own CFIT training program, which will go into far greater detail. I ought to define CFIT as an in-flight collision with terrain, water, or obstacle without indication of loss of control. The main difference in these types of accidents is the fact that the aircraft was under the control of the flight crew at the time of the collision. CFIT prompted the design of a GPWS, Ground Proximity Warning System. A more advanced version was later developed of the eGPWS, the Advanced Ground Proximity Warning System, which has predictive capability by overlaying the aircraft's computer position with a database of known runways, terrain, and obstacles to create caution and warning envelopes ahead of the aircraft, which will trigger the relevant callouts and warnings. TORS or Terrain Awareness Warning System is the umbrella term for all current as well as future systems. Since the implementation of TORS, there has been a substantial decrease in the number of CFIT accidents, especially with the newer generation of aircraft, due to improved navigation performance, glass cockpits, and FMS. CFIT, CFIT accidents include human factors, uh, as well as violations and errors by both air crew and air traffic control, such as loss of situational awareness, not adhering to landing uh, minimus, altimeter setting errors, poor SOP adherence, misinterpreting the approach procedure, and crew complacency and weather. Examples of ways to help mitigate some of these risks is to make sure that you have current up-to-date charts, stick to your SOPs, give detailed approach and departure briefings, and make sure you are aware of the surrounding terrain during all phases of your flight. If your approach is unstable, go around. When it comes to CFIT, there are three key points. Avoidance, we need to avoid when CFITs are likely and how to avoid them. Recognition, we need to know the warning sign should we start nearing these situations. And then recovery, acknowledge and accept that you're in one of those situations and take immediate action. Let's look at each key point in a bit more detail. Avoidance, know when controlled flight and terrain is most likely to occur. Generally, this will be during the descent, approach, and go-around phases of flight. There is a higher risk with non-precision approaches. Circling approaches pose a threat, as you could lose situational awareness if you lose sight of the runway or when descending into mountainous or hilly terrain. Once we know when they are most likely to occur, we need to know how to avoid them. We can do this by making sure that both pilots are thoroughly briefed regarding the planned descent and approach. This ensures that they are on the same page, and once a crew have agreed on a plan, they should fly the plan. Recognition. Know what to look for. Any changes from the brief plan, expected weather changes, workload increases, deterioration in performance due to fatigue are all warning signs and increase the risk of CFIT. Recovery. When the crew recognize that they are in a risk of CFIT or they get a TORS warning, they need to accept this and take recovery action immediately. They need to follow the GPWS commands, level off at a safe height and select a safe heading. They can then start re-establishing situational awareness, update ATC, and rebrief the approach. In conclusion, TORS is an incredible invention and has saved countless lives. It provides a last line of defense and improves situational awareness, but it is still no substitute for proper planning and training. Until next time, fly safe.